Ah, uh, hello. How's it going? Welcome back. Here we are. Here we are. We've been gone. And there you are. But we've been working. We're back. Yes. Thanks for joining us. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician. This is my beautiful partner, boss, wife, and manager, <laughs> Nisha Solis Hyphenberry, registered nurse, certified breastfeeding consultant, and health coach. She has more initials than me. <laughs> We're glad to be back with you for the next edition of Monday Night Live. Hit that subscribe button if you want to comment because you got to be subscribed. Oh, that is true. To, that is true. Question. Also, your questions are not guaranteed to be answered in the 60 minutes that we do this live, but we That's try right. our best. We're going to answer as many as we can for the next hour, but we may not be able to answer them all. So for the next hour, we're going to be answering as many questions as we possibly can. And so type your question into the comments as succinctly as you can while including all relevant information. And we will try our best to answer every single question that we can. Now, let's get a watch party started. There's a little button down there that says share. Click that button and share this to your favorite social media. You can also send it in an email or a text message to somebody because you know your friends and family got questions about their health. Why can't I lose weight? Why is my A1C so damn high? That's the way they're going to get their questions answered because their doctor's probably, probably not going to be able to help them. So you are looking radiant this evening. Thank I'm really, you. I'm really vibing this. Thanks. It's a good hair day. <laughs> it is. You're like a Puerto Rican Farrah Fawcett major. I prefer Jacqueline Smith myself. Jacqueline Smith. Uh, correct. It's all about yes. ruin it. Corrected. All right. Let's answer some questions. You ready? Do it. All right, we've got some announcements coming up later, so don't miss those because a few of those are very, very important. But for now, let's answer some questions. Let me see. Let me do this, and then we'll get started. Nothing is guaranteed. That is true. Oh, <laughs> it, and oh I forgot to say, put, put the capital letter Q in front of your question. So oh, here we go. Here's a question. Uh, from Jennifer, question, creatine and its effects on mitochondria dysfunction, particularly with Parkinson's as well as dementia. So there is some limited research about taking creatine uh, if you have Parkinson's. Uh, I don't know of any about dementia, but the thing you need to understand is that if you're eating a diet rich in meat and seafood and eggs, you're going to be getting plenty of creatine. Okay. You're not going to need to waste your money on a supplement. Good question. Now, let's see. Vicky's got one tribe member keto, still high blood pressure. Doc has me on metoprolol, which is a beta blocker due to emotional anxiety, BP spikes. Does this hinder weight loss or sugar levels? Help. Yeah. So a beta blocker of any kind is going to uh, lower your metabolic rate. It's going to tend to make you feel droopy and draggy, not as motivated. It's going to tend to raise your blood sugar. And so, if, and also keep in mind, Vicky, that it's not blood pressure spikes. If I reached over and grabbed a handful of Nisha's luxurious hair and pulled it really hard right now, her blood sugar, I mean, her blood pressure would spike to 200 over 100 as she got prepared to kick my ass. She doesn't need a pill for that. That's normal. That's natural. If you get emotional, if you get upset and your blood pressure goes up, that's not a treatable event. Your doctor should not be giving you a pill for that. What matters is your blood pressure average. Over the course of a week, check it twice a day when you're calm and relaxed only. Because if I got up and jumped this desk and took off running trying to prevent Nisha from kicking my butt, my blood pressure would also go up. That's not, that's not disease. That's normal. I have to have a high blood pressure in order to run fast to get away from her because she has short legs. Does that make sense? So you should not be taking metoprolol for occasional emotionally related blood pressure spikes. Inappropriate. So, but yes, it's also slowing down your weight loss. Good question. Claudia, white blood cell count 3.9 six months ago. Last week it was 2.6. Testing B12 and folate this week. Carnivore for 14 months. I eat beef daily. All metabolic markers are super. Uh, super high LDL. High LDL. What to do next? Okay. So what I needed to know was your red blood cell count, your hematocrit, your hemoglobin, uh, your MCH, your MCV, MC... Uh, MCHC and your uh, reticulous, reticulous eye count. Those are the numbers I needed. Your white blood cell count uh, doesn't really have anything to do with B12 and folate much. Uh, 
your white blood cells are acute phase reactants. They go up or down based on hundreds of different things in your body. It's the red blood cell count I need to know. And so if you'd like to share your, your complete blood cell count, uh, we have a private group that you can join. It's five bucks a month and you can post your labs and everybody will discuss. Uh, but if you don't want to do that, then you can just do another message here. Thank you, Patricia, very much. Demetrius, people I follow over the years have been flipping on keto, low-carb fasting. They say it messes up BMR, basal metabolic rate, and works against your goals. What do you say? I say they're completely and totally wrong. See, there's so people don't understand the business side of YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. If you just get on social media and you say, okay, I'm going to tell you the truth, and then you proceed to tell everybody the truth, you'll get four views. Okay? But, and sometimes I'll do this in my titles of my videos. I'll say, meat is dangerous. Here's five reasons why. And you're like, well, I thought he was a carnivore. I thought he ate keto. Now he says it's dangerous. I got to watch this. But then when I watch it, it's like you're in danger of having to buy smaller shoes. You're in danger of having to buy smaller pants. You're in danger of having to buy a bigger hat because your IQ went up, that kind of stuff. And, but people are going to always be doing this flip-flop thing, Demetrius, to get you to click. You're like, oh, my God, the keto's worked so well for me. But now so-and-so is saying it's dangerous. I better watch that video. Shit, I better sign up for their program to learn because I thought keto was part of the proper human diet. That's what's going on, Demetrius. Don't don't worry about foods just like that. People who tend to do that flip-flop thing, they pretty much fade pretty quickly over the next year or two. You will stop seeing their feed because everybody stopped following them, uh, rightfully so. Michael, my wife tested positive for antiphospho, uh, antiphosphodil uh, serine, prothrombin, IgM, indicating blood clotting risk. Is there any risk that carnivore possibly make things worse or risky due to her blood clotting condition? So there's nothing about a carnivore diet or a keto diet that increases your risk of forming blood clots. Uh, actually, there's there's many physiological markers that would make you think that it would decrease your risk of forming blood clots. They're both very uninflammatory diets, and inflammation is one of the things that can lead to an inappropriate blood clot. And so, no, your wife's perfectly fine eating keto or carnivore. Uh, both of which are parts of a proper human diet. Thank you so much, Holly. Holly's such a sweetheart. I just need to clear something up because this has become a topic from my last video. If you watch my What I Eat in a Day video, I said I was craving pickled asparagus. And that's weird because I don't like asparagus, right? I'm not pregnant. That you know of. No, I am currently on my monthly lovely visitor. I'm not pregnant. Could be I early show. You don't know. It's just not. Oh, no, it's not. It's, it's... <laughs> I'm holding out hope. There could be baby berry number three. I don't know why I want pickled asparagus. So I just also <laughs> on Nisha's channel is a video of me getting a vasectomy. So yeah. she's probably not And I, I have not cheated. So there's that. Because that's somebody be like, well, she's not well, enough. You know, she's not younger. I'm too lazy for that. <laughs> D, TSH is 0 0.074 to free T3. It's free T4 is 1.5. Will carnivore fix hyperthyroid? Uh, are you on thyroid replacement hormone? Have you been formally diagnosed with hyperthyroidism? Um the numbers you've shown me, there's you need the full thyroid panel checked, and we've got a list of that in our private group, the full list. Uh, but just from the two labs you shared, I'm not convinced you have hyperthyroidism. You need to get a full thyroid panel uh, checked. So as of yet, with these two labs, no doctor can can morally say you have hyperthyroidism. You need more lab testing done. Your turn, Mama. Rush man, nine three. What is the best and worst seafood to eat? Is canned tuna or canned crab meat okay? Is there a limit of how much seafood one should eat? Yeah, I don't think so. I think seafood is fine. We focus on eating smaller uh, herbivorous fish from the ocean, like uh, sardines, like anchovies, mackerel, uh, herring, cod. These things, they're mainly herbivores, so they don't get the, the mercury buildup that a carnivore fish does. I also try to avoid very large fish like swordfish and other large carnivore fish because they'll have a higher mercury content. Now, the crab meat in a can, you better read those ingredients because it's quite likely that it's not crab meat. 
and canned tuna is fine. Uh, you actually want to find the, the, the cheapest canned tuna and canned salmon that you can because they're typically wild caught because they're smaller fish. Also, you can just buy fresh wild caught salmon, sockeye salmon. Yeah. It has to be red. If it's like a pale pink, it's probably not wild cut. Caught. Or cut. <laughs> or cut. Thank you very much. See Amelia. Oysters also. Yes, amazing. oysters are great. Any any shellfish, any musk, mollusk, any crustacean, I think they're all fine. Uh, do I think they're better than beef? For me, no. Personally, I love all seafood, but I feel like my health is better if I'm eating mainly beef. But it's probably different for different people. Patricia, 67 year old female, five foot seven, chose carnivore three and a half months ago at, at, for fatigue and bones. Too weak and skinny now. 130 pounds down to 115. Uh, of salt, water, fat, meat, eggs, minerals, hardly any dairy, what to do. So, Patricia, my first thought is, and I want Nisha to chime in on this too, my first thought is, is that you're, you're portion control, and it may be unconscious. You may not even intentionally be limiting your portion sizes, but I think that's probably what you're doing. When you eat a diet that's full of healthy animal fat and animal protein, it's very satiating. And for many people, usually women, it can be so satiating that it allows you to be like, oh, I'm, 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 I'm fine with just a four ounce piece or whatever. You got to stop that. I need you to eat until you're comfortably stuffed on a carnivore diet. Now, what would you add to that for our friend Patricia? Um, Yeah, definitely make sure you're eating enough fat. A lot of women, when they go carnivore, their fat goes down and they're not aware of it. Not purposely. It just kind of happens sometimes. Um, salt. Maybe you need a little bit more salt. And I would just also say, you know, have your hormones checked too. Yeah. Yeah. And also see if anything is going right. on there. And keep in mind, if if you're sitting there, Patricia, saying, no, I do eat until I'm stuffed. My husband's like, damn, you're eating a lot of food. Then you need to go see your doctor because this, mm -hmm. this is unintentional weight loss. You're right. losing weight for no reason. There could be some underlying hidden medical condition causing <clears> that to happen. Keep us up to date. I want I want feedback after you see your doctor, Patricia. Tia, hi. Hi. I eat about two pounds of ground beef and four to six eggs a day, but my breastfed premature baby has only put on one kilogram in three months. What should I change? Are they okay? So premature babies are always going to be under the curve yep. until they catch up. Yep. Uh, and that usually doesn't happen until like month eight to 12. They're just under the curve. Yeah. And then also, um, go ahead. No, I was just going to jump in and say, so if this is the, the 50th percentile and your baby's doing this, it doesn't mean that your baby's not gaining weight. As long as those curves mirror each other, your, your, your baby's a premium. So they're going to be underweight for a while. And is the, are, are you, I don't know if your bottle be like pumping because a lot of times in the NICU, they don't get to exclusively breastfeed, so you start pumping. Um, start putting the baby to the boob if you're not, just so your body, baby's mouth, the saliva, and the like, the latch, that actually changes how your breast milk is made. And if you're just pumping and not latching, then that can affect the amount of fat, the calories, antibodies, like a lot of different things. So if you're not already putting baby to boob, do that. This is a little bit more complicated. Like I would need to ask you a hundred other things, but that's that's the generalized answer that I have. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Angela Hale, very much. Christy, Dr. Berry, do you need to drink lemon juice while you're on the carnivore diet so you don't develop kidney stones? So someone has convinced you, Christy, that eating meat causes kidney stones or eating eggs or eating seafood causes kidney stones. Whoever that was, you need to find them and unfriend them because that's not true at all. Eating meat doesn't cause kidney stones. That's a complete and utter myth. I've got a video on this channel about what actually does cause kidney stones, but it, it's not eating meat. And so if you like a drop or two of lemon in your water for flavor, I think that's totally fine. But keep in mind, lemon juice is very high in sugar. If you don't believe me, I know it's sour, but lemons and grapefruits are very high in sugar. You just can't taste it because of all the acid. Here's C. Amelia again. What about overactivation of mTOR because of eating too much proteins and the relation to cancer? So the, the mTOR argument was very popular two or three years ago. All of the plant-based people have stopped even talking about this now. 
uh, the, the authorities in the field. They never mentioned this anymore because it was a dumb argument to begin with. And they, they had no research to back it up whatsoever. There are multiple things that activate mTOR besides just eating protein. Multiple things. Working out activates mTOR. All these good things activate mTOR. And so they the only people you'll hear saying this anymore is like third and fourth level vegans and plant-based people who are not in any way thought leaders. They're just repeating the echo of the lie that they heard two years ago. So don't worry about this. Human beings have been eating meat since before we were human beings. Meat is a, an ancestral health food for us. Have you hit the thumb? Hit the thumbs hit up. The thumb. Not the thumbs down. Hit the thumbs up. Whatever you want. Be honest. Kimberly. Well, okay. it's fine. It's fine. Kimberly, PhD, 112 days, down 40 pounds. Huzzah! Last few weeks, notice a slight brown discoloration around the mouth. Is this a deficiency? My doctor ordered blood work from your list in the Common Sense Labs for, um, book, and it's scheduled for this week. This is probably not a deficiency. It may or may not turn out to be anything worrisome at all. Uh, definitely let your doc check it out. Check all the labs. I don't think you're going to find anything in the labs that will explain this. Um, I'm trying to think of anything worrisome that could cause this. Uh, no, no dark, darkening or discoloration here. No problems with sun sensitivity. Um, follow up with your doctor about this. There's a few things that might, but that'd be a very uncommon place for this discoloration to be happening. Uh, half the man question. Hi from the UK. Oh, everybody, tell us where you're watching from. Half the man's over in the United Kingdom. Where are you at? What city, what state, what country? Tell us in the comments. I want to see where you're from. I'm 12 months in on keto and 160 pounds down. You want to say it or should I? Huzzah. That's so good. That's so good. My question is, is it okay to use apple cider vinegar on carnivore? Yeah, if you want to, you can use a little bit of apple cider vinegar. There's no need to. There's no reason to. But if you want to, I don't mind. I've not heard anything. Yeah, it's it's the kind with the mother in it. That's what yeah. I use. Yeah. Uh, if, by the way, I need to say this in my next vlog. When I put apple cider vinegar in my, I'm going to call it NSV tonic, nature sauce very tonic, aka, AKA Keter. Keter. Yeah. You knew I was going with that. <laughs> I'm only doing that because I like the taste that it gives it. Yeah. Not because I think it's doing anything special yeah. for me. It's not. But magic. it's also, it's not causing any issues that I can tell. But don't think that like you have to add the apple cider vinegar. You no. can just drink the, the electrolytes by themselves and that's fine too. Uh, that's just, what I do because I hate the taste I of I love kombucha beer. and a lot of kombucha has a lot of carbs in it. I know it's fermented out, but still it gets in there. Yeah. For me, I'm not I'm not willing to sacrifice that. So I make the Keterade because it gives me the kombucha yeah. vibes. And also I'm able to drink my electrolytes without putting stevia or sweetener in there, which is nice for me because I just, the element, the flavored ones are so good, yeah. but they're a little too sweet for me currently. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I drink element too, but lately I've been, I've been using half unflavored and half flavored because the watermelon and the lemon lime, I could drink 14 gallons They're of that. Delicious. They're freaking amazingly <laughs> delicious. And I'm not so sure that I'm okay with that. So I'm cutting it. I'm, I'm probably going to switch completely to unflavored. But their raw ones have no citric acid, no stevia. It's literally just. The unflavored. Yes, the raw unflavored. It's just salt, potassium, and magnesium. It's magnesium malate that they use. Okay. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, and I actually have a video about apple cider vinegar on this channel. It kind of tells the truth about apple cider vinegar. And I got a lot of hate comments because some people believe it's magic. They can't help it. They just believe that. Kellyanne, I have PAH. Is carnivore safe for me? Yes, ma'am, it PAH? is. Yes, ma'am, it is. is. What is I that? forgot. Uh oh, sorry. Thanks for thanks for pointing that out. Anna, yes, it's it's completely safe. Anna, hey, Berries, my question is about fibroids. How long should I give before I uh, go the operative route? I'm 64 days on carnivore, and I'm 48 years old. So first of all, Anna, are the fibroids, fibroids so big that they're causing abdominal distension? Are they causing pain? Are they causing bleeding? If they're not causing any of those three things, fibroids are not dangerous. If your doctor just happened to see a fibroid on a scan, there's no reason. To have, to have surgery. But if you're like, no, my, I look like I'm three months pregnant or it's causing my periods to be crazy, 
uh, then yeah. And so what I would do, I would go at least 90, 120 days carnivore and then have your doctor repeat the scan. And also you take a fresh uh, thought of how are my symptoms. <coughs> and then at the 90, 120 day mark, if you're like, oh, yeah, it's no better than, than surgery. Yeah. Right now, inside of our group, I'm doing a carnivore challenge. I'm calling it the common sense carnivore challenge. Okay. It's very, very simple. Choose a way of eating that is calm. Excuse Sorry, me, sir. I hit the wrong one. I read it and then <laughs> hit the wrong one. So I have graphics in there that show you the different levels of carnivore because those are just levels of elimination. Diet. So there's carnivore that is all meat. You can have dairy and you can still include, you know, sweeteners or whatever. Then there's the next level. You take out dairy or you take out the sweeteners. There's graphics for all of that. We are halfway through it, but that doesn't matter. You can still go ahead and join and start today. That's fine. There's no rule that you had to start on the 1st of August. You can jump right in. Many of the ladies, there's a lot of ladies in there. Many of the ladies jumped in late and they're still doing great and very involved. And on the, what is August, September 1st, we'll just start another round. So go ahead and hop in there if you want to hang out with me. That sounds like fun. Can yes. I hang? Can I hang out with you too in there? Sure. All right, That's Michelle, sure. Doctor Barry, hello. Been on carnivore diet for a month and lost fifteen pounds. What do you think about popcorn on the dirt? On the dirt? On the diet? Bonnie Blue, <laughs> Bonnie Blue would eat popcorn off the dirt. One hundred percent. Eat anything. Eat off the dirt. Absolutely. But I popcorn is basically starch and with zero nutrition whatsoever. Popcorn is not a weight loss food. It's not a diet food. It's just corn that's been popped. And corn contains an, an inflammatory molecule called zen, which a lot of people don't know about. They've heard about gluten and gliadin that's in wheat. But they're like, I've never heard of zen before. And that's it's basically a gluten-like molecule in corn. So I avoid any kind of corn. And I, if, if Nisha eats corn, she looks like she's three months pregnant. Mm -hmm. We avoid it. And I, I would recommend that, that, I mean, if you love popcorn, then have it on your anniversary, have it on your birthday. But as far as a daily food for improving your health or losing weight, it's completely worthless. Yeah, it's not a whole. Not at all. Let's see. We did that one and that one. Okay, E. Clay, my doctor says my BMI is below normal and I need to put on weight. What's the best way to put on a lot of weight with keto? So the way to put on weight with keto, if you want to put on muscle E. Clay, then you're going to eat lots of fatty meat and eggs with the yolk, and you're going to start lifting heavy weights. Heavy for you, wherever you're starting from right now. That might be five pounds or that might be 150 pounds. I don't know you, but you know you. So you want to stress those muscles and you want to do something like a, a four-day split, chest and triceps one day, back and biceps the next day, legs the next day, then take a day of rest, and then repeat that over and over and over, lifting heavy, lifting hard. That's how you're going to put on muscle, increase your bone strength, all of which are going to show up on the scale. Now, if you want to just gain fat, then just increase the amount of processed carbs that you eat, and that will take care of that for you. Thank you very much, Barbara. Jaroslaw. Diagnosed with SIBO and candidal overgrowth, four weeks in carnivore beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, feeling worse, constipation than on carbs. I'm afraid I don't digest fats, and that makes it even worse, been in a lot of pain. So you need to go see your doctor. First of all, if you weren't digesting fats, you wouldn't be constipated. You would have the screaming shits. Okay? So you're definitely digesting the fat if, you're, if you think you're constipated. The second thing to understand is that on a carnivore diet, everything you're eating is pure nutrition. You're not going to have the same volume of feces that you had back when you were eating a plant-based diet or a high-carb diet, standard American diet. You're going to have a lot less poop. Some carnivores only poop every third day, and they have no constipation. They have no problems. That their gut is happier than it's ever been. So I don't know why you think you're constipated. Uh, but also the SIBO and the candidal overgrowth, if you've been strict carnivore for four weeks, both of those are gone. So if you're still having stomach problems, you need to go to a, a, a an MD doctor, a DO doctor, maybe not a naturopath. You need to go somewhere where they can do a colonoscopy. They can do a CAT scan if you need that kind of stuff done because there may be something else going on. Robert, does vaping, especially an artificially sweetened vape, affect blood sugar? 
Good question. I vape all day long, but he got me off cigarettes after smoking for 31 years. Yeah. Good job. Yes, 100%. Job. I would I would 100 times rather you vape than smoke. And we're going to unpack this because there's several things here. First of all, the sweetened vape is not going to raise your blood sugar unless it's sweetened with sugar, in which case it will. But it's very likely that a sweet the sweet taste of vape juice, I guess it's steam when it goes in your mouth, could, vapor? could raise your vapor. Yes, thank you. <laughs> See, that's why I keep her around. It could raise your insulin level, which could slow down your ability to burn fat. That could absolutely be the case, at least for some people. Uh, now, but now, let's, if it is keeping you from going back to the cigarette, yes, just start decreasing the amount of nicotine in the vape. Yep. Like, I don't know how much is in there, but like decrease it by half and then decrease that by half and then go all the way down to zero because there are zero yep. milligrams nicotine yep. of vapes. And then See where you go from there. Yeah. And I actually have a video on this channel about vaping versus smoking cigarettes. All you guys who still smoke cigarettes, please switch to vaping. Okay. And I know a lot of doctors out there are going, what did he just say? Yeah. Switch to vaping. Now, if you don't smoke, don't start vaping, dummy. That's dumb. Don't do that. But if you're currently smoking cigarettes, absolutely switch to vaping. And you're going to cough for three or four days because you're no longer inhaling smoke. You're inhaling water vapor. When I first switched from cigarettes to vapes when I was quitting this years ago, I was like, there's no way this is better. I'm coughing. Yeah. How, is that, how can that possibly be better? Right. Because I, I was inhaling smoke and now this the water vapor is making me cough. But right. In three days, you're completely used to it. Yeah. And so then, but then the beauty of vaping is that you can, like Nisha said, keep buying lower percentage nicotine until finally you're like, why am I even doing this? I'm, I'm on zero nicotine. Then you can quit. Let me just be 100% clear here because somebody's going to hear something and blah, 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 here we go. He is not saying vaping is healthy. That's right. He is saying it's a step in a more healthy yes. direction yes. than yes. tobacco. Yes. So if this is the spectrum of badness and goodness, okay, cigarettes are bad. Vaping is less bad, but yet still bad. That's why I said don't start if you don't vape. But if you already smoke cigarettes, Please, I implore you, switch to vaping, and then you can start the slow wean down process. It's virtually impossible to wean down cigarettes. I've had so patients over the it's last hard. two decades try to wean them down. It just doesn't work. It but just doesn't work. when you smoking is one of the most addictive things. It's like if 100%. you've been a smoker, you get it. I get it. It's hard. It's so hard. If you're it's moving hard. in the right direction, good for you. Absolutely. Thirty-one years, my God. Yeah. And I can promise you guys that if 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 the because there's been a ton of research done on vaping. Right. If it was more dangerous than tobacco, oh, my God, they it would be all over every headline that it's worse. But what you see is vaping is just as bad as tobacco. And then every now and then they'll talk about, oh, he got spongy lung or he got Swiss cheese That's lung. And it's like one guy out of the millions that they No, they're just that's just scare tactics to get clicks like I was talking about earlier. If it was worse, oh my God, would they not be pounding on that? It's not worse. Okay. It's not, it's not good, from but it's not as bad. Yeah. From the research I've seen. That's right. Research. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for clarifying that. Thank you, Jules. Thank you, CW. Thank you, Rushman. Is sodium nitrite bad for your health? Is there any difference in nutrition when buying eggs from caged chickens or free run chickens? So, first, the sodium nitrite. Did you know human beings have been, have been, uh, seasoning and preserving meat with with salt which of which sodium nitrate is one we've been doing that for thousands of years using salt to cure meat okay uh it's not bad for you it's actually converted into nitric oxide in your bloodstream which helps lower your blood pressure yeah so so the nitrates nitrites that they use to to cure bacon are not bad for you this is this is baloney that you've been fed it's a false narrative okay now uh, eggs from cage chickens versus free run chickens. Uh, if you've ever seen a, a, a chicken house that's got 10,000 chickens in it, it's terrible. It's awful. So, but the problem is, is they use words like free run chickens, free range chickens, cage free chickens. And it doesn't mean what you, what you think it means. They're being unethical when using the terms. What I would encourage all 3,600 of you guys to do is to get on Facebook, or me, we, or whatever you use to actually talk to people and say, hey, I would love to find a local source of 
eggs. I want to find a little old man or a little old lady that's got 10, 10 hens in the backyard. I want to buy eggs from them. If all you guys did that, all of a sudden this cage free and all this kind of horse crap as those eggs just sit in the grocery store, they'd be like, we got to do something where our egg profits are dipping. And then all of a sudden they would truly start having pastured hen eggs. And then that's fine. Bottle Farms and Happy Egg both are two brands that are pretty, Pete and Jerry also, as far as I know, yep. good brands. Yep. But it's going to be cheaper to find somebody who lives down the road that has. 100%. And you're going to eggs. help your local economy. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, that was Rushman. Thank you, Jules. Uh, Bruce Leroy. I like that name, Leroy. Hey, Doc and Nisha, how is it possible I have a CAC of 2,700 but negative stress echo of uh, 14 minutes with no concurrent blockages? I work out daily, lift, and run often my whole life. I'm 50 years old. So this is possible. I know you're, you're like, wait a minute. If I've got all these blockages. But so coronary artery calcium score, what it looks for is calcium deposits in your coronary artery wall. And just because it's in your artery wall doesn't mean that it's sticking out into the lumen and causing a blockage. And so it's very possible. And many people will have a high CAC, but then if you, if you do a, a cath or you do a uh, stress echo, their arteries are clear. And so I, I think you're probably not at any increased risk over and above somebody uh, who, who had a lower score, but you still want to try to be lowering that score, and you're going to do that by eating a real whole foods, one ingredient ketogenic diet or a ketovore diet or a carnivore diet and repeating that CAC scan every 12 months. And I think you're going to find that that's, that score either stays the same or it comes down slowly. We've seen hundreds of people lower their CAC score with a pause, proper human diet. Pause, pause. Anna Cecilia uh -oh. says, I saw your family at Disney World, but I was too shy to say hello. Girl, what? Why did you not come over? I'm sure I looked like I was fixing to lose my mind because it's Disney World with two kids. But you should have come and said hi. That would have made our day. 100%. We've met people at Universal, at Disney World. Always come say hi. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm kind of I'm kind of hurt. I'm a little mad at you. Yeah, yeah. I'm mad. I'm, we're not friends until next Monday. <laughs> so oh, and I got two things to tell you about. There's an event that Nisha and I are going to be speaking at coming up in Dixon, Tennessee in August. Is that this month? Oh, my. ADHD. <laughs> so uh, if you'd like to, the, all the in-person tickets are sold out, but there's virtual tickets still available. Okay. I put a link down in the show notes. It says Dixon, Tennessee event. And you can click on that link if you want to attend that virtually, not in person. And then also we're going to be at Tita Palooza in Louisville, Kentucky. Do we have a link to that? I do. It's down in the show All notes. All right. Yeah. Uh, Keto Palooza. I'm excited about Keto. And there's a discount code for Keto Palooza. Uh, the discount code is PHD. It's a really good one. Yeah. Do you know really the rest good. of our calendar? I do not. No, you no. don't. I got emails from two people today. That's why I remember. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good job okay. for reminding me. So then after that, we're going to be in Salt Lake City. What, what month is that? October. Uh, so that's uh, Keto Palooza also in October. I don't know if you said that. Uh, we'll be up there for a few days, hanging out with the Keto Chow crew and doing a meetup. And then we'll be in Gatlinburg with Rebecca. We have a thing for this. Oh, okay. So Rebecca Farmer, she does these very, very intimate retreats in these beautiful cabins in the middle of the Smoky Mountains right next to Dollywood, by the way. And they are awesome. And uh, Maria Emmerich's going to be there. Who else is going to be there? Somebody else. Well, we're going to pop in, but Marie's going to be there the whole time. And somebody else is going to be there. Dr. Kills, I think, maybe. maybe. I don't know. Um, you can message her. This is her email, Rebecca at tailoredketo.health. Food is provided, and it is good food. Quality meats that are cooked fresh. They have a chef coming in. I don't know if Maria's going to be the chef or if there's like another chef, but either way, Maria's going to be the chef. Maria's all you be need. Good. She can <laughs> cook. Oh my uh, goodness. So the food is included in the price. It's a beautiful house. You get your own bedroom. It's just, it's great. It's a, if you have the money to spend on an event and you want the time with people, like very intimate. Like we did a Monday Night Live from there the last yep. time we were there. With the live studio. Yeah. Amazing. It was awesome. It's one of the, best ones if you have the budget to spend on like that that's a good one you're going to get to spend so much time with maria ever yes like, 
Yeah. She's a dog. Run. Run now. We love her. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see you in North Carolina. Is that right? God. Gallenberg. Sorry. Debbie Marie. Now, now health gurus claim supplementing that vitamin D is toxic. What's your opinion? So remember earlier when we were talking about uh, how now some influencers are like, oh, keto saved me, but oh, now keto's dangerous. Yeah, this is the same thing. They can't get clicks for saying vitamin D is good for you, so they're going to get clicks by saying vitamin D is bad for you. Okay? So vitamin D is not toxic. As long as you keep your vitamin D 25 level somewhere between 50 and 100, huzzah, that's where you want it to be. All right. There you go. Kelly Hogan. Kelly Hogan. Kelly Hogan. Kelly Hogan, Kelly Hogan. absolutely. Kelly Hogan, Maria Emmerich. Who bomb? Dang. Kelly Hogan, Maria Emmerich, and Nisha Solis Heifenberry all in the same room at the same time. Oh. I'm, that'll be like a little baby heaven for me. Like, if you want to be around some bad women. Yeah. Go. In a good way. Yes. Yes. The best. I'll be there. I'm coming now. I He'll be there too. But I wasn't coming, but now that I know you three are coming, that's it. I'm there. <clears throat> Thank you, Snog. Thank you, Kian. Thank you, Will. Uh, Buck, should I avoid daily minerals since I take Losartan? No, you should not. Marnie Mack. Hey, Marnie. I just want to say thank you again and want to keep this message going. Keep talking, Dr. Barry. Honey, I ain't ever going to shut up. The American Medical Association can come to my house with federal agents and they can suck it. I ain't going to shut up. Because I know that this is helping people, and that's my job as a doctor. He's not lying. If not lying, no, I'm not. He's like the guy on the Matrix when he's like, like, bring it. Come at me, Bubba. Let's that's exactly what I would say. Come at me. Make your play. Who said that? I forgot what maybe that was. Make your play. I, I choose remember. your player. <laughs> Jewels and crafty tools. That kind of runs. Would nitric oxide pills work for my husband's high blood pressure since he's not willing right now to do more than work, do more work than that? Okay. I'm not sure that nitric oxide would make it through the gastrointestinal system to be absorbed. I'll have to, I, I, I didn't know anybody was selling a nitric oxide supplement. Uh, probably what's in it is sodium nitrate. For sodium nitrite because that's converted and there's actually a pharmaceutical company that's studying it trying to get a patent to, for a blood pressure medicine because you know the stuff that cure bacon with that causes cancer yeah they're, they're trying to get an fda approval to put it in a drug because it turns into nitric oxide and lowers your blood pressure so if that's what's in it jules then yeah it's probably fine he could just get that from eating cured bacon though he might enjoy that better also he'd be getting plenty of healthy animal fat and animal protein as well but if you just want to do the, the supplement, I guess that's okay, too. Sultan says, hey, Nisha and, and Kenberry, does eating tortilla wrapped and brown whole grain bread decrease the unhealthiness? Thanks for the reply. Funny you should ask, because yeah. Dr. Barry just did a short all about that just yeah. today. So a lot of people still believe that brown bread is somehow better than white bread. It's not at all. It has all the bad effects of white bread. OK, even if it says whole wheat, stone ground, non-GMO, organic, and it's got seed sprinkled on the top, it's still going to spike your blood sugar, spike your insulin, cause inflammation in your gut or your joints or your skin. It's going to keep you from losing weight and it's going to make you a type 2 diabetic eventually. Bread is not good. Bread, eating bread is stupid is the name of my new short. Go check it out. You know, that's that's how we got started on this social media journey. That's right. The first video. video about bread. Is yep. bread healthy? Which bread is healthy? Ezekiel bread, sourdough. Those are the two hot yep. ones right now that get talked about now. Yep. And I now let me sourdough. Let me just tell you guys. And Ezekiel bread is better. I think. Than, yeah. Careful with your words there, love. Let's back. Yes. Yeah. I think. I think real sourdough. Real sourdough. That means if you ain't got some little special you container put the work in, sis. in your refrigerator, what you're eating ain't sourdough. Okay. I think it's less bad. And I think that Ezekiel bread, which is sprouted grain, I think that's less bad when it comes to inflammation. But that does nothing to lower the carbohydrate count, to lower the, the sugar. All the starch is going to turn into, it's still a sugar bomb, but it's less inflammatory. Yeah. So therefore, it's less bad. For me, I, like, I don't have type 2 diabetes. I'm not insulin resistant, any of those things. I have an autoimmune disorder. So sourdough bread, 
I wanted to put the work in, which I just don't, <laughs> would be okay every now and then for me. And I do have it from time to time. But that's because my illnesses are only, if they're more affected by the other breasts. But sourdough, if I ate it every single day, that would eventually probably cause a problem for me too. Yep. But you have to, you know, understand it's, it's, I, I, I like to say, if it takes a lot of work, it's probably not ancestrally yeah. appropriate. Yeah. If it takes a lot of your time and effort, like you can throw a piece of meat on a fire and cook it, but you cannot bake a cake unless you go get the box from the Walmart without putting a lot of yes. effort. Many, many it. hours. Exactly. And now let's repeat that just to be clear, because this is kind of hard to, for some people to understand if this is optimal and this is neutral and this is real bad, here's white bread, here's brown bread, here's Ezekiel and sourdough bread. They are less bad, but they are not good. Okay. They are good if you're starving. But they're tasty, but that doesn't make them healthy. If you're starving. Yeah. If you're starving. Oh my God. If you're starving, eat all the bread. Yes. Christy Smith, I will continue to have what Nisha and Dr. Barry are having. Y'all look amazing. Aloha from her. Aloha. I hope y'all are Aloha. okay down there. In and huzzah. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you, Deborah. Thank you, Deacon. Thank you, Jenna. Thank you, Penny. <clears throat> Claudia, red blood cell counts normal, except for low platelets for eight years. No treatments. Last week, uh, 137.1. Do take Plavix due to mild stroke in 2019. So they're just a little bit low. If I'm hearing you right, Claudia, if this is worrying you, ask your doctor to refer you to a hematologist. That's a blood specialist. But if your doctor doesn't seem worried, uh, then this may be no big deal at all. Some people just tend to have uh, platelet levels that are just a little bit lower than normal, but it turns out it's not a big deal. But if your spidey sense is tingling, I always trust a woman's intuition. You I always should. have from day my first day. Uh, seeing patients. If a woman was worried about something, I'm like, I ain't taking no damn chances. We're going to check this out. But it, it could turn out to be no big deal. Schnog, thank you very much. Trond Arlid Ingen. Wow. Thank you very That's much. That's a mouthful. Uh, thank Vicky, you, Vicky. tribe member, but never <clears throat> can see your live until it's over. What am I doing wrong? I'm not good with this site. Vicki, if you can send me a direct message inside the community, if not, here's the easy thing to do. When you get on there, in the menu, which is on the left-hand side, on your phone or on your laptop, either one, click on the home button, or and, and that'll take you to the main screen. Also below the home button is events. If there is an upcoming event that you have access to, it will show there. If you click on the past button, it will show replay. I know that's a lot. But if you can figure out how to send me a direct message in there, yeah. I will walk you through. Now, what Vicky's talking about is inside mm -hmm. our private group, we do an additional four live Q&As each and every on your week. Level. And depending on the level you sign up for, you get access to a certain number of those live events. Uh, we're going to be live tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. Central in the private group. And instead of 3,800 people asking questions, there will be 200. And so we'll have a lot more time to answer questions more thoroughly and more completely and, and answer all. You typically we answer every single question during a live, but at least we try well, to. Well, we try to. We try. You also have access to our moderators and coaches. Who you are have access primo. to me. The challenge is in the same group. So when you sign up for his group, you get me too. Yep. All levels have access to any challenges going on. You were on. live in there earlier I'm today. Live most days, except for on the weekends. And you also get access, like I said, to the coaches who can also answer questions. Yes, and they're, they're amazing. PhD trained, Absolutely. check mark, approved. Yes. What you won't get is medical advice that doesn't give you a one-on-one -on -one consultation with Dr. Berry. You are not his patient. It is a community of like-minded individuals there to support each other. It's just like this YouTube channel, but more intimate. Yep. Michael says, develop Raynaud's after going carny. Is this related? Probably not, Michael. This is probably coincidental. There's nothing in a carny diet that would cause an autoimmune inflammatory condition. Uh, carnivorous me, all of the hey. best. She's the best. She if you is. don't follow carnivorous me story on Twitter and on YouTube, you're missing out. This girl ha ha is changing the world by changing her life in just a, it's, it's like metamorphosis. That's, that's the closest 
scientific term I can think of. Like she literally, talks she about is the real stuff. It's yeah. not just like here's what I'm eating. It's here's what I'm struggling with. Here's what my where my mind is at. She's been through this for over a year now. Like she's put in the work. She's had up. She's had downs, and she shares it all. If you want a very relatable story about carnivore, you're missing out if you haven't subscribed to her channel. Thank you very much, Judy Schmedley Butler the Third. Haven't had a single five daughters donut in seventy five days. Five daughters, yeah, Are they're tasty, and so I know that that you have been doing the work. Uh, beef, bacon, eggs, kraut, sardines, mackerel for sixty days. Finally, starting to see my bottom two abs. Uh huh. There you go. Most guys don't know that you actually have eight. You don't just have six. So if you've got a six pack, that's really good. But there's actually eight there. And when you can start seeing the bottom two, you know you've been doing something. So, yeah, sugar is a 100% a racket. I totally agree. Judy, hi from San Diego, is using stevia or essential oils, okay, on ketovore or carnivore. So I would uh, use stevia in moderation and actually minimize the use of stevia as the weeks go by. You don't have to stop it today, but just keep using less and less and less. Uh, because humans were never, we, we, we weren't designed, we didn't evolve to have something sweet with every meal, a sweet drink or a sweet treat. That's something that modern society has trained us, programmed us to think that we need. You don't need that. And so if you want to have something with stevia for your birthday, anniversary, some event, that's fine. But on a daily basis, try to keep the sweet taste out of your mouth. It's just not necessary. It doesn't help you in any way. Also, essential oils, I think, are, are great for diffusing or for just having around the house. They smell really good and they come from natural sources if you buy a reputable, you get quality reputable ones, brand. Yeah. There's some good brands on the market now. Yeah. Yeah. I use essential oils every day in my diffuser. What I don't, kind do you use? I stick to, like, pure ones, so. Citrus, like lime, tangerine, orange, the thieves blend, uh, lemongrass. I don't devil off into like the crazy complicated ones. I keep it pretty simple. Do you recommend a certain brand? I use Young Living and you can use my link. It's in my, all of my descriptions to sign up and I'll never ever. On your YouTube channel? Ever. Yes. I'll yeah. never ever ask you to sell anything because I don't have time for that. So if you want the diffuser that I have, all that's always linked in my description. Thank you, Caroline. Chris E, will keto, ketobore, carnivore help raise my hormones? All are very low. You uh, know, the sparkling water in Bragg's drink. Love the sparkling water in I, oh, I Oh, Aunt Nisha, I love, I got it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay. go. It's like learning a new language sometimes. So uh, we've had hundreds of people who have raised their testosterone levels, <clears throat> mainly men, some women as well. And then even some women have raised their progesterone levels by eating a proper human diet, keto, keto, or carnivore. It doesn't happen for everyone, but it has happened for a substantial percentage of people. So what I would do is do 90 days of strict carnivore, fatty meat, beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. You can add seafood if you want to. That's fine. And then get your hormones rechecked after that 90 days. And you might be happy with the results. If you're happy enough, then great. If you're not, then you wouldn't need to talk to a doctor who does bioidentical hormone optimization. Lily? Do you want to come say hi to everybody? Jeff, I have a Element link that gets you a free sample pack with your purchase. I will say the best bang for your buck is to buy the buy three, get one free set. And then you can get like three flavored and one raw or something like that. But that link is in my last video if you want to use it. Uh, always learning. I, I had many blood work issues, high glucose, high triglycerides. After a few weeks of keto, everything's back to normal. Yeah, it's like when you stop eating high carb inflammatory things and feed your body real human food, it's like your body just heals and goes back to the way it was supposed to be. It's really cool like that, isn't it? Lynn, I've been carnivore for about a month now. How do I locate a carnivore-friendly doctor in my area? So I have a video on this channel called How to Find a Low-Carb Keto Doctor Near You. And in the show notes, there's six websites you can put your zip code in, no matter where you live in the world. And it'll tell you the nearest low-carb-friendly doctor and if a doctor understands low carb, they're going to understand keto, carnivore and keto as well. Kellyanne, PAH is pulmonary arterial oh, hypertension. Duh. Yes. Type 2 diabetes and had a recent episode of congested heart failure. Yes, 100%. Carnivore is safe for you. Uh, pulmonary arterial hypertension is much different from just essential hypertension, as I'm sure you know, Kellyanne. 
I'm sure you hopefully you've read everything you can get your hands on about PAH. Uh, but yes, there's nothing in a carnivore diet that's going to cause uh, inflammation in the arteries or is going to cause clogging of the arteries. Yes, absolutely. You, you deserve the benefits of eating a proper human diet, even with PAH. Lori, a question about a few labs. TSH 0.14. But free T4 is 1.4, estradiol is 41, testosterone is 38, DHEA is 208. What do you think? So this is the perfect kind of question that we answer in our group all the time. Um, I don't see anything here that really jumps out. It may you need a full thyroid panel if I'm going to talk about your thyroid health with just these two labs. You could be hiding Hashimoto's, you could be hiding hypothyroidism, and you wouldn't be able to tell at all. Uh, testosterone is 38. I'm assuming you're a, wo a woman, Lori. Uh, we, that's not a bad testosterone. Some women feel best with it 50 to 100, but some women feel great with it 38. Those of you who have a lot of questions about your labs or just want to learn more about your labs, I forgot about that. Just education wise, this is the Common Sense Labs book. And by next week, this will be available on Amazon for those of you who are like, I don't know how to buy that book on that website, I don't know how to download it. It will be available on Amazon. Yep. Next week, there'll be a, a paperback just mm -hmm. like this, or you can get the Kindle version. It's caught, but we're, we're waiting on the Kindle version. It's got to be formatted. It's very Amazon's very picky. Yep. So common sense lab, just keep checking Amazon over the next few days. And if it pops up and it says Dr. Kim Berry and Kim Howerton down here, that's the one. That's the one. It's a great resource. <clears throat> and it also has the, the optimal... What, levels that you want all your labs to be while i'm at it because he won't talk about this stuff kicking ass after 50 is now available on audible and amazon and if you've read this book make sure to leave an honest review yeah. so uh the rest of the world can see this book because when there's positive reviews or you know if you don't like it be honest be honest yeah we can share this with more and it really is not even after 50. If you're going to be 50, which I hope we all are, right, then this book is going to be beneficial. It's not just for guys either. A lot of women have read it and said that it was helpful for them too. So available on Amazon and already the Audible. Yes, it is his handsome, beautiful Southern draw on the Audible. Why does everybody say I have an accent? I don't get it. Right. Sophia, my 86 year old mom, chronic, chronic kidney failure, creatinine of four, I think is what you meant. Protein good, pancreas bad shape on dialysis two times a week. Uh, so she has stage four, stage five mm -hmm. chronic kidney disease if she's on dialysis. On low salt, low fat diet, no dairy, taking enzymes, poop is yellow. Yeah, what to do to keep them healthy. So your, your 86 year old moms went way down oh. the road. Okay. So you're not going to be able to change her diet and get her back to normal health. Uh, there's been a lot of damage done by the diet she's been eating for the last eight decades. But if you slowly transitioned her to a ketogenic diet consisting of meat and veg, half the plate meat, half the plate veg, that's what keto is. Some people think keto is weird and science, sciencey and weird. It's just meat and veg. And then a few berries and a few nuts. Uh, it's going to improve her overall health, including her kidney health. We've had people with uh, CKD stage four revert it back to, to stage three and even stage two. Not promising that'll happen. I'm saying we've seen that happen in hundreds and hundreds of people. So uh, if your mom's amenable, first of all, because she's 86, if she says, look, Sophia, I'm done. I don't care. I want my oatmeal and my jam on my toast. Fine. Give mama. It's fine. She's 86. Don't fight with mama about trying to make her eat a proper human diet because she's the one that brought you. You cannot talk to her that way. You treat her with respect. I know you do. Uh, but if she's willing to make small changes over the next month or two, you could convert her to a very healthy um, proper human diet. Keto, absolutely, yeah. How old is Nisha? Thank you, John. Yes. How old is Nisha? Nisha is 37. Getting old, baby. 37. Getting old. I'll have to trade you in. I know. I know. Hey, Lily. You know what Lily wants? She wants a carnivore crisps dog treat Why don't because they're sitting here. Oh, that's what's wrong with her. <laughs> uh, yeah. I was so, going to say she never does this. Thank sorry. you, John. Thank you, John. I just realized that that was.
they were sitting, she could see them. Uh, by the way, discount code Barry for the dog treats and the human treats. Show them the close up. Look at this. It's just sliced up meat with some salt. Yeah, Redmond salt, too. Yeah. I just did a short video. Let's look at her. She's like, yes, I'm sitting here. I made chorizo queso dip and used the... That is so rude. And used the brisket as my chip. Here, baby. Do it, you good girl. It was really good. Just wow, it's so tasty. Which one is that? That's the brisket. Beef brisket's my favorite. Brisket, yeah. Absolutely. Is that backwards? Probably. Oh, Discount good. code Barry. Hmm. He, uh, yep, for the, the past, first two months of life, uh, I was breastfeeding and pumping, so she would have top top ups after feeding. The last four months, just breastfeeding. Yeah. So you got to eat to your comfortably stuff to you. No portion control, no calorie counting. Eat, eat, eat. You're eating for you and making milk for somebody else. You got to eat. Do not be afraid of, of eating more. First of all, plenty of fat, plenty of protein. Your body's going to make whatever sugar needs to be put in the milk. I bet you're not doing anything wrong. Um, does she need to, would she benefit from talking to a, a certified breastfeeding consultant? No, because it doesn't sound like you're having a problem I agree. with the latch or the baby feeding. It just sounds like slow to grow. And that as a NICU baby, premature, yeah. like that's, that's par for the course. Yeah. Definitely talk to your pediatrician and ask right. them, Keep an eye on ask it. them blatantly, are you mm -hmm. worried at all about my baby's growth velocity? And they'll tell you if they are. They'll be trying to push formulas on you and push stuff on them to get them to gain weight. And so if your pediatrician's not really doing that, then your baby's probably growing fine. But you're a good mom, so you're worried about that because that's what moms do. It's it's Anne, it's Anne. Anne. Hello. Long time no talk. Ah, what are your thoughts on element electrolyte drink mix? Do y'all know if mayo can be made without vegetable oil piece? So we've already talked about Element like seven times during yeah, this. Element's the bomb. It's, it's great. Yeah. Uh, unflavored if you're trying to stay pure. And mayonnaise you can make with olive oil. You can make with MCT oil. You can make with bacon fat. You can make with butter. All are great. You yep. can make them very cheap in your home. It's a simple, simple fix. What does it take five minutes once you get good once at it? Once you get good yeah. at it, it's really quick and easy now. Of course, it needs to be refrigerated and you need to put the date on it because, it's, you know, it can go bad quicker it's because it's not food. got preservatives in it. Right. right. Um, there are some that you can buy. Mm. Primal Kitchen makes a good one. Uh, what's the other brand? Chosen Mayo. Oh. Check the ingredients always. Uh, but <clears> they are a little expensive. It's much cheaper to make your own and it's really really pretty easy do you guys know anybody who's made may mayonnaise with beef tallow because i haven't seen that I, I wonder if anybody's tried that i i the butter is maybe the best one. Oh, butter mayo man yeah. we were talking to maria emmerich about butter mayo you can at, uh, um the last conference two crazy ketos has the recipe on their youtube yeah. channel by the way they only have 50,000 subscribers on their channel. Yeah, that's not okay. What is happening here? They make the most amazing content. They're so real. They're so genuine. They truly care about the people in this community. If you're not subscribed to their channel, go check them Please out. Please do that right and now. And if you find them helpful, which you will, hit that subscribe button for them. Yeah. Two crazy ketos, crazy with a K. Yeah. Two crazy ketos. Please do that because they, they, I mean, the, the level of support you get just by being a subscriber to their channel mm -hmm. is just out of this world. Yeah. Rachel, you talk about, you talk some about vitamin D, K, iodine, and some. Is it necessary for people to add supplements to a carnivore diet? Does it truly make a difference? Have had a debate with mom over it. Uh, LOL. So I think that most people are not getting enough iodine. Now, if you're eating lots of seafood, you're probably getting enough iodine. You don't need a supplement at all. Uh, but many people, if they're eating beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, and that meat was grazed on pasture, that the soil was low in iodine, there's not going to be any iodine to speak of in the meat or in the eggs. Same goes for produce. If the broccoli grew in dirt that was low in iodine, there's not going to be much iodine in the broccoli. That's why out of an abundance of caution, I recommend people supplement with iodine. That's why me and Chris Baer put 500 mics of iodine in the daily mineral drops. And so I think minerals are a big deal. I think a lot of us are deficient in this mineral or that mineral, usually iodine. Uh, there's a link in the show notes for daily minerals if you want to check them out. But so on a carnivore diet, especially if you're eating liver, 
you're not going to have any deficiencies. The only thing is maybe vitamin D if you live at a very northern or southern latitude and you just don't get enough sunlight. And if you don't eat vitamin D rich foods, which I have a video about on this channel, I've got the top seven vitamin D rich foods that you should eat in their whole seafood hint because that's where the, the vitamin D comes from. Some egg yolks that they're pastured, they're pretty good sources. Um, some livers will have a little bit of vitamin D, but mainly it's seafood. But uh, And then vitamin K2 is the other one. Vitamin K2, there's, a, there's enough research that we know it's important, but there's not enough research that we know how important. And so out of an abundance of caution, I recommend that you try to get eat K2 rich foods. I've got a video about that, but also you can take a vitamin D3 K2 supplement that comes in a combo in MCT oil. You can buy, buy it off Amazon. And so those three things I think most people probably should think about. Is it going to just greatly enhance your health? If you're deficient, yes. But if you're not deficient, probably not. That's it. Time's up. If you like this content, smack the thumb. Don't forget to subscribe if subscribe. you haven't already. And if you like health and wellness, lifestyle, motherhood, recipes, I'm stealing your people. Come to me over on my channel. Come subscribe. We have a good time. And it's a little less formal and a little more laid back. I do a live stream every, uh, once a month on a Tuesday. That's tomorrow. So if you want to come hang out with me oh, tomorrow, okay, okay. I'll be doing a live stream over there. And I've got tons of content, yep. ketobore recipes. And if you've got kids or grandkids or great grandkids and you're like, can, can kids eat keto carnivore? Well, guess what? Beckett's three and Bonnie's one and they both eat ketovore. You can see them on Nisha's channel. I don't put them on mine. I just don't because mine are more like, you know, this kind of thing. But she's just like filming the kids running around, eating their sausage and petting the dog. and it's kissing. real life. Yeah, it's real life. So it's kind of a behind the scenes of what happens at the Barry household. If you didn't get your question answered, we're very sorry. But 60 minutes flies by and we get to as many as we can. Yeah. If you want to join the community, then you can hang out with us, drgrade.com slash community. Again, access to extra lives. One for five dollars. We'll be in there tomorrow at six p.m. Come hang out with us. If not, guess what? We'll be right back here. Tomorrow. Yeah, and tomorrow. in the, tomorrow. In the community, <laughs> in the community, when we're live, there's no super chats. Okay, you yeah. just ask your question and it gets answered. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see you tomorrow at six p.m. in the community, or we'll see you next Monday night. But Nisha will be live on her channel tomorrow. tomorrow. You just type in Nisha. How do you? N e i s h a Nisha. Good job. Oh, that's awesome. All right, guys, we're out of here. We're going to go play with our babies. Thank you very much for watching this. Thanks for sharing this video. You want to say anything? Any final Love words? Love you, Mina. Oh, so sweet.